What's up, everybody? It's Thursday night, and that means it's time to talk about movies. This is the P.O. Vincent Podcast here on the River's Edge Network. I'm your host, Vincent Didiano, and with me, of course, is the human megaphone, my co-host, Eric Williams. I love how that's still putting a smile on your face. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, Vincent. It feels great to finally be acknowledged for who I really am. Normally, people are just like, yeah, that loud asshole. <laughs> Eric Williams, a voice for radio and uh, a face for a mugshot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Gosh, I'm not any better looking. I don't even know why. Oh, 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 time out, time out, time out. Why do you need uh, acne in your 30s to have a mugshot? <laughs> oh. Like, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I should just try to get a job as the model for a before picture for every acne medication. Like, all of them. Like, my skin isn't, it's its not that it's, like, the worst ever by any means. And uh, I'm generally pretty comfortable with it at this point. It was just, uh, it's one of these things that I've come to terms with. Because at one point, uh, years ago, my parents were in their 60s. And I noticed that on the same day, each of them had a zit. And I was just like, this is just never going to stop. Like, this is, like, I just need to be okay with it. And uh, luckily, I found out that there are things that matter to people more than all right hold up then what's going on <laughs> what's uh what's what's uh vincent oh, okay. what, are, what are you what are okay there's nothing wrong with my computer then i thought the <laughs> sorry lady. okay so what happened there is vince like just signaled to his computer screen <laughs> because he was like eric eric Eric, it's just, it's just, you still have P.O. Vincent as a whole screen. They can't see us. And I was like, uh. I was confused too, ladies and For those of you who were watching on the live stream on my computer, I, I just saw the entire picture being our logo, but I could see on the, the streaming uh, a program that we use here at the studio that our image was up. So I guess there's just something wrong with me here. Are uh, you looking at last week's P.O. Vincent? No. Are you sure? No, no, I'm not looking. I know what I'm doing. No, I, I, I clicked the friggin' thing. Are you sure you didn't click on the last week's P.O. Vincent? Or maybe, no, you started watching the... Dude, you're starting from the very beginning of the recording. I don't know how. I guess it's supposed to be a live stream, but... Uh, anyway, what? ladies and gentlemen, here on the P.O. Vincent podcast, we're always ready to admit our mistakes. And just deal with the shame later and privacy. I mean, I just admit that I'm my parents' mistake. Ooh, ooh. Well, anyway. Actually, I was a planned pregnancy, which makes it even worse. <laughs> uh, and somehow my uh, somehow I'm still the favorite over my brother. <laughs> I don't I don't know, like uh who is generally just the better human being slash student than myself. <laughs> But he likes to be a prick, so I went out because I just Eddie Haskell shit. Uh, for people like below the age of 38, Eddie Haskell was a character on Leave it to Beaver. Didn't they do a movie about that in the 90s? I don't think they said people below the age of 38. I think you need to up that number a bit. 54? Like, I don't know. Like I said, they did a movie in the 90s. Oh, that... Oh, I, I mean... Yeah, if you remember that one. I did, I forgot about it. You just mentioned it five seconds ago. Oh, man. Did but, you know what I meant by Eddie Haskell? I, I No, I didn't. Cause I forgot that. I, like, I, I'm aware of the show Leave it to Beaver. I'm aware of the classic TV show from back... What was okay, that, so Eddie Haskell is like the the friend who's always like well dressed, and he's like like yeah, oh yeah, Mrs. Beaver, blah blah blah. I'm so good. And then she leaves, and he's like, we're gonna rob a bank, and we're gonna kill a bunny rabbit. <laughs> and just to be clear, killing the bunny rabbit is the worst of those two crimes. <laughs> Sweet. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Time to get on some stuff. We once again last week we uh, we had a lot of uh, we had some trailers to go over. You know we had uh, we had trailers. Yeah, we had Avengers Endgame and Godzilla King of the Monsters had. Uh, and once again this week, there's we always trailers, Vincent. There's always trailers. They just keep coming. They really do. They really do. Uh, so yeah, last week we had Avengers and Godzilla, and uh, this week uh, we're gonna. Uh, sorry, 
I didn't expect. I forgot these trailers were like coming out, kind of. You know, like like you forgot, you forgot, Vincent. Come on, I come did. on. All they wanted was for you to remember their anniversary and get them some flowers. <laughs> and you were like, what? What are you even? What are you even? Wait, what? What trailers are we even talking about? Well, well, let's get in. Let's get right into it, ladies and gentlemen. So, first trailer of the night is for a reboot that has been uh, people been talking about for a while. Oh and, man, yeah. You, <laughs> it's from a certain comic book series. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk about Hellboy. Let's get it going. So it was announced last year that David Harbour, um, Harbour, Harbour, uh, Harbour, Harbour, yeah. David Habifek? Yeah. Huh? What the fuck? Are David you doing? Hightower? David Harbour. Harbour. Okay. Har- the, the, the sheriff from Stranger Things. <laughs> Ta- talented actor. Um, he was announced that he would be uh, the new uh, be become the new Hellboy. And uh, the previous Hellboy films, we had uh, Ron Perlman play. Yeah, the role, we did. And he yeah, was awesome did. in the role. You know, even if if you don't like the Hellboy movies, he was like you know, you know shining part of it. Um, and I enjoyed both the Hellboy movies. Eric, what are your feelings on Hellboy? We've never discussed this before. I don't think I actually saw this. Hellboy is one of those things where it's not bad, but it's disappointing. And it's disappointing because it's not bad, but it underachieves. Uh, did did uh, Del Toro direct one or both of those? He directed both of them. Okay, so like visually they're stunning, but the at least the first one, and from what I've heard, the second one could have could have had better scripts. They they could have had uh, scripts where the author was trying to follow the hero's journey a little bit a little bit more precisely. Yeah, they're, they're not perfect films. I'm not going to say like they're you know, A-plus or anything of that nature, but I still found them very enjoyable just because uh, Guillermo del Toro's uh, visuals, his monsters, uh, such a variety of different creatures, but you can all see the, uh, okay. uh, the del Toro touch on them. Neither uh, Okay, at least the first film, which I'm pretty sure is better than the second film because it's the first film. That's true, like eighty percent of the time. You can make that. Uh, I still like the first film. It's no Pan's Labyrinth. No, it is not. But uh, it should be noted that when it came out, um, it was uh, the number one movie in the country the, the week it came out. It, it dom- okay, and, and then and then and then the week after, The Dark Knight came out, and that was the end of that. How <laughs> how how many uh, like rock movies could we say that about that are like objectively just like not good movies? <laughs> like no, I I I like the rock. There is a difference between success and quality and this is a common psychological error that we make like when things do well we're like oh it must be good like no not necessarily i hear what you're saying i guess i just i just kind of want to defend these films no no again it's it's not it's not bad in fact like is i actually saw this one in theaters like it's i'll I'll give it i'll give it a b minus but that's the thing that's the thing like it also I feel like the originals popped up a little bit too early in the uh, movement of of uh, superhero movies. Well, I'll say it popped up too early in in the era of consistently quality superhero movies because it's in that time period where they were figuring out like not everything needs to be Batman or not everything because like you had to hold all that dark and edgy like the first Daredevil movie. Um, uh, you know the uh, the Underworld series, and you know, I like the first Underworld movie. The the quality starts to scale off after the first one. Um, once again, not a perfect film, but uh, it was you know, Romeo and Juliet. No, the was first Under Underworld is a bunch of fun. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, and th- they set up a really cool concept that is stylistically executed well. And in fact, like the story for at least the first one is actually really good. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's just after that point where I don't know what happened. I mean, just ugh. I mean, I, I didn't even see the last one. The last one came out like a year or two ago, and it's like the last one in like the it was like Underworld Blood Wars or something like that. And after the, the previous one, where it's like I don't fucking care. But anyway, let's get let's get back to this Hellboy trailer. So once again, I feel like the second one was alright. I can't I can't remember. The, the second one was cool because they brought in the they expanded the concept of hybrid monsters, even though they just look like more more month it, it, it's it, either the second or third movie that falls in the category of like i watched it and like i didn't think it was horrible but i was way too high to remember it and didn't think it was worth re-watching it, it's one of those movies where like the action sequences are good and it's cool to see more powerful versions of vampires and werewolves 
But beyond that, the story... And Nothing the, in the writing really surprises you. No, no. It, it, it's, it's something you watch for the action only. But anyway, yeah, so we got the new Hellboy movie. It's coming out um, April next year. Uh, David Harbour is playing uh, Hellboy, and he's got, you know... Um, and I'm watching through the trailer, and I, I, from the trailer, right off the bat, they want you to know, this, they want this, yeah, it's going to have monsters, it's going to have action, but it's going to be a lot of fun. There's a lot of jokes in the movie. And well, that was one of the best parts of the... the oh, I mean... The best part of the first movie, uh, do, okay, my opinion, and th- this is going to be a spoiler for the original Hellboy. But, oh, no. Spoiling it after all these years. But, like, so, uh, vaguely, it involves, like, some creature from hell who, like, takes the soul of Selma Blair, like, and a Hellboy does something, and, like, her soul gets released, and, oh, shit, She's like, what did you do? And he was like, you know, I told them, if you don't let her go, you'll have to deal with me or something like that. Well, well, he starts it off with like a real romantic thing. It's like, you know, or like real heroic kind of way of saying it. It's like, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, like I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tear something like, like, you know, like for her, I'll do anything. I will tear the world down to save her. So, you know, let her go because otherwise... You're gonna regret it. Like he threw that Ron Perlman charm right there at the end. <laughs> That's what. Yeah. I, yeah, it starts out like real, like romantic because he's like, like finally these two characters are like allowed to like, be, you know, be loving around each other without worrying about all the bullshit. And he, you know, but it's still Hellboy, so he can't, he can't end it like that. Um, that moment encapsulated the attitude and demeanor uh, that should have been the whole movie. But wasn't there throughout the movie, and yeah. and that that's where I get. I say, I'm, it might sound like I'm hating on Hellboy. I'm not. But when I say it was disappointing, it was one of those where you're like, yeah, this is gonna be absolutely amazing, <laughs> and it, it 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 had areas that could have been improved upon. Right. Right. Yeah. But anyway, so in, in this new trailer, once again, we see uh, we we don't see some of the characters from the previous movie. We don't see Abe, a, uh, you know, a, a, you know the uh, the fish guy. Fish guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We don't see some. We of did what... not coordinate that uh, ahead of time, uh, okay. like our uh, dark colored outfits. Uh, it's just a fishy night, people. It's just gonna be a fishy night. Y- y- That'll make more sense later in the show. I mean, one of us could have said merman. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, Selma Blair's character doesn't seem to be in the trailer either. It, yeah, the only characters I recognize are Hellboy and his and his father, who the professor. Um, and uh, you know, it goes through it where like Hellboy, like, we see a lot of him beating up on monsters and bad guys. We see him and his father getting into a disagreement. There seems to be some tension there about Hellboy regretting his father turning him into like this soldier, basically, and like he feels like you know he's so yeah, which is something that came up in the previous Hellboy films about the, where how Hellboy is uh, viewed and respected and, and like you know because the, they say in the previous films you know, like why he like time out who's his dad in the first one is that William Hurt no that is John Hurt John Hurt yes John Hurt the A K the War Doctor yes the War Doctor who sadly passed away uh, 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 a couple years ago now, that so. guy there there are cert- certain people that like. What William H. Macy and Steve Buscemi were for years until they started actually getting leading roles. Like the guys who are just like, they're never the lead, but they're the Mercutio all the time. You're like, oh, that supporting character who is actually the best part of things. <laughs> yeah, no, John Yeah, John Hurt was really great in The Last Hellboy. Um, uh, this one, they got Ian McShane, who was also a really cool actor. So I'm, Of uh, course he is. His yeah. name is Ian, duh, and yeah. he's Irish, or he's just a liar with a last name like McShane. I don't care. His voice is sexy as shit. Oh, he's, one damn, of, he's, he's one of those old son. guys that I, I bet he's still slaying to this day. <laughs> uh, uh, some, never, some, some of you know him as a guy who... Wait, wait, wait. Time what, out. What? So you're sure he's still an active vampire hunter? <laughs> I won't put it past him. Fair enough. Fair enough. But anyway, so yeah, so and there seems to be tension between him and Hellboy because Hellboy's like, "You turn me into a weapon." He says it right in his trailer, and he's just like, "I just want you to be the best you you could be." So there's gonna have some like father son things about you know that of that nature. Where in, in the previous film, it's like him and like the only tension was like Hellboy has a pretty uh, uh, rough and tumble way of handling things, and his father's like, you know, hey, you know, like. They he was still supportive of each other. They weren't angry. Um, but anyway, you know, the trailer uh, goes on, and we see just like kind of like weird 
goofy moments. Like, once again, we got the humor in there. Some of the jokes in the trailer don't really land, uh, some more than others. Um, uh, David Harbour, once again, I'm, I, when I heard he was cast, I was like, that's a good choice. I, I like that, that casting decision because I think he can pull it off. Yeah, it's kind of like that because based on the, the character he portrays in Stranger Things, it's kind of a somewhat similar personality, kind of like, oh, God damn, I got to save the world or, you know, no, oh, what's this bull crap? Oh, you, see, you it's, know, it's like, the thing about having the name uh, like David Harbour is you can never name your daughter Pearl. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. I would. <laughs> like you uh, ruined your, you ruined your mom's body. Now you're Pearl Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of things that have nothing to do with Pearl Harbor or Hellboy, except uh, someone who does love comic books, our friend Zach Funk, who is uh, featuring at the Guardhouse Mike tonight, has an album recording April twelfth at the Funhouse at Mister Small's. Tickets are on sale. Highly recommend that. Very funny guy. So wait, what what else were you saying about this Hellboy trailer? I was saying um, there's this guy who keeps interrupting me when I'm trying to get to the goddamn trailer. <laughs> anyway, um, there's a couple weird little oddities in here. Like there's this one scene in it where it's not the same room, but it, you ever see Blade? Yeah, you yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, the Wait, scene- what was I was I born in 1985? Yeah, yes I was. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Anyway, so remember at the end of Blade they're like in that like forgotten temple with that big long stone kind of like walls and columns. There's this You remember that, right? I I believe it's it's the first one where, like, there's that weird sexual chemistry between him and his mom. Uh, Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so Am I wrong? They they definitely delve into that. Okay, that is wrong, but am I wrong? You you are not wrong. You're not wrong. Uh, But anyway, they seem to have that same room in this movie, or like, (laughs) it's not the same room. It it really isn't. It's definitely, it just, it looks so much like it that it just, I just, it's like an uncanny valley to it. No, 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 no. It's just like, it's like they saw it and they're like, how can we make that except like a little smaller? It's just like here. He's, he's, I mean, isn't it just your basic, like, uh, stereotypical sacrificing? Altar room? No, no, it's huge, dude. That was a huge effing room. It was big. Well, I mean, I'm sure, not talking about no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not talking about the one where Blade was uh, like trapped in that thing and they bled him. I'm talking about below that downstairs where they uh, turned Deacon Frost into the Blood God. That 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 room, the big white walled room. Anyway, um, and like I said, the, the humor there because that's just Hellboy. This man knows his Blade. Yes, I do. Um, the humor works sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, another thing that I'm worried about is the makeup job, the Hellboy makeup job. Dave- oh no, not the makeup! Yeah, um, d- uh, like uh, it seems like uh, David Harbour can't fully express his face. Like his, it can move, but there's just some kind of weird quality to it where it doesn't. It doesn't feel as natural as the makeup job on Ron Perma. You see what I'm seeing here? I, like a little bit, like you'll have to like you, whenever you get a chance to watch the trailer, um, it, it just like he can move his mouth and stuff like that, but he does seem like maybe he doesn't the same range of expression that Ron Perlman had. It, it, it's bothering me a little I, bit. I, I see what you're saying from all the views. Like he always looks like he's glowering, and yeah. even Ron Perlman, who always looks like he's glowering, didn't look like he was always yeah. glowering as Hellboy. Right, right. Um, so after this trailer, I'll say once again, I'm, I'm not going to say whether the movie is bad or not. The trailer, I think it's fine. I, it doesn't. I mean, I mean, it's just going to be hard to top a Ron Perlman because so many people wanted a Hellboy three, and that was so dependent on uh, uh, Guillermo del Toro having another successful film. Because at first it was like, all right, if this uh, was this giant robot movie you're calling Atlantic uh, Rim, whatever the fuck it's called, if that does well, we'll get you Hellboy three. And he was like, okay. And then Pacific Rim didn't do well enough. Um, and then it was like, he uh, did Pacific. Why is he just really bad at like finding a writer to work with? I don't know. I mean, I enjoy Pacific Rim. The biggest problem with Pacific Rim in my in my book, um, and we were talking about Pacific Rim last week on the show because Sarah was here. Um, and my biggest problem with Pacific Rim is the main character played by uh, Charlie Hunnam. Um, his character is goddamn boring. Uh, his his his, his co pilot, uh, what's his name? Uh, I can't remember. But the female main character, her her story was way more interesting because the problem with his character is his whole character arc ends within the first 30 minutes of the film. He he doesn't really he's like his brother dies, he's like I don't want, I don't pilot anymore. It's like, well the well the world's dying. 
All right, I'll pile it again. <laughs> okay. And so then he's he, like, he's fine. There's nothing wrong with him. He's just, he, he becomes, he takes more of a mentor role. It's just, it's, it's bullshit. It's like, um, everything else about the movie I enjoy because it's definitely got that anime feel to it because uh, Del Toro's an anime fan. But uh, yeah. Um, so you watched Pan's Labyrinth. Have you ever watched The Devil's Backbone? I have not. Uh, that, I don't know if it's his first film, but I mean, it's, it's in Spanish and I believe, I believe Pan's Labyrinth was described as a spiritual sequel to it, but it once again takes place during the Spanish Civil War. Okay. Uh, and where it once again deals with kids, but kids. What I'm saying is, like, uh, I really like Guillermo del Toro as an uh, director, and people should check out The Devil's Backbone because it's got orphans and bombs that don't explode and ghosts and Guillermo del Toro directing. Yeah. So, what's next? <laughs> oh, now that you're done. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, well, next we got another trailer, ladies and gentlemen, and we got another kind of a. Where this uh, previous one trailer was about a reboot, this is one about a soft reboot. It's time to talk about Men in Black International. Uh, it was announced a while ago that they'd be making another movie. This new one is starring uh, Chris Hemsworth, uh, Tessa Thompson, uh, Liam Neeson, and uh, well, that's pretty much it. Uh, okay, so Liam Neeson and Danny Trejo have to be the most badass geriatrics, right? Pretty much. I'm trying to think... Uh, I mean, Keanu Reeves is kind of like, because, I mean, Keanu Reeves Keanu is Keanu like, Reeves is only in, like, his 50s. Danny Treyu's like, my dad's age. Yeah. Danny Treyu is, like, 74 or some Wait, shit. Wait, is it, it Treyu or Treyo? I thought it was Treyo. Uh, the important thing is that he's 74. That is true. No, no, I'm not going to deny. I, like, I wouldn't screw with Danny Treyu. I and, well, no, th this he, actually, just look, he just do that face. And this like, guy pointed out he doesn't look as old because of how pockmarked his skin is. Oh, yeah, his skin's horrible. His skin is horrible, but it's so bad that it's been the same Pockmark skin since he appeared in that Van Damme movie in, like, the 90s or whatever his first appearance was. Oh, the earliest movie I know him for is uh, for Desperado with... Uh, uh, oh, damn. He's in Desperado. I don't know if that's before. I believe he's in, like, Lionheart. Oh, one, I don't know. One of the 90s uh, Van Damme movies that doesn't involve Van Damme murdering the Penguin's mascot. <laughs> I never saw that film. You never saw Sudden Death? No, I wasn't a big Van Damme guy back in the day. But he murders the Penguins, man. It's amazing. He has a full-out fight team with him. And maybe Sheena that's why his Carol career went down this. the tubes. Um, you took out a penguin. People love penguins, and then his career went down I'm tubes. pretty sure he did Time Cop after that. So, like, we clearly can't attribute it to that because Time Cop was about a cop. That time travels? And time! Oh, okay, no. Most other guys time travel in sand, but he was time traveling in time. Okay. Anyway. Shut up! Anyway, on to the Men in Black trailer. <laughs> so the trailer, from what I can see in the trailer, um, Chris Hemsworth and uh, Liam Neeson seem to be a partner duo, uh, kind of taken in, in the sense like we had uh, Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones where, you know, uh, Liam Neeson's the older, more experienced one, and uh, Chris Hemsworth is like the younger guy. But in, well, it's not a beginning point where it's like they've been partners for a while, and now Chris Hemsworth is a veteran MIB agent. Then we cut to Tessa Thompson, who apparently uh, found out about the MIB years ago and has been trying to discover them ever since. And she finds them. She finds M MIB headquarters, is able to walk right to hell in. And because of that, they bring her onto the team. And uh, <laughs> okay, that actually, uh, considering like the setup for the original, that actually makes a lot of sense. Oh yeah, she does like that door with a big fan, and like, the old guy's in there. He's like, uh. but, well, no, but the idea that like, hey, if you can like figure out our bullshit, she threw it and get here. Yeah, you're you're perfectly qualified. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, so they make her an agent, and they're like, we have a problem over in London. So they send her over to London to team up with Chris Hemsworth. So Are her and Chris Hemsworth fighting Brexit? <laughs> they're fighting the Brexonians. <laughs> from the, from <laughs> they want Indian food to leave England. <laughs> No. What will they do without tikka masala and don't butter say, chicken? Don't say that. Don't say they're going to take away Indian food. You're going to scare our friend who's watching right now. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so yeah, and the trailer goes on. We're like, uh, I would scare myself. Do you? I, 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 I'm, I'm, I so um, there's, a, there's a, a good karma. Get 
I talk about the fucking trailer, man? Can you stop sidestepping shit? Love karma. Okay, oh. you can talk about Thank the you. There's a little Easter egg in the trailer uh, to uh, J and K, you know, our, uh, our heroes from the previous films, where there's like a portrait in, I don't know which one of the headquarters, whether it's in the American headquarters or the London one, where it's like a portrait of them staring down the cockroach alien from the first film, uh, next to a portrait of Chris Hemsworth and Liam Neeson's characters uh, in Paris, France, because I can see the Eiffel Tower going against some alien, I don't know. So basically what the, the trailer is trying to show is that Liam Neeson and Chris Hemsworth's character in the in the MIB universe are on the same level as uh, you know they've Jane. done some shit. Yeah, um, but so Tessa Thompson, she's a new, she's the rookie. She's teaming up with Chris Hemsworth. They send her straight to London, and this is something that I found goofy about the trailer. So because they're in London, they play a song, a classic British song about London. Eric, take a guess what song they play. Just take a guess. London Calling. <laughs> My Lundy, Lundy preachers go down. <laughs> remember that song? Every, remember that song? Why is it every time you come around? My Lundy, Lundy preachers want to go down. My Lundy, you remember that fucking song? A, I don't remember. It's that a song. real song. B, what the fuck? It's a real song. It was like a, it was like a fucking hip hop song from like I don't know, fucking ten years ago, and it's playing in the trailer, and I was like, wow. That's your fucking song, a, a song that no one fucking listens to anymore, and it was just like popular for like a few months, and and, and because they're in Britain, they couldn't pick any fucking Why other song. Didn't they go with London Calling. I don't know. It makes it fits. Like they're like, hey, we're in America, but London's calling. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe this song was too expensive. Maybe like they could get that song for really cheap, and they're like, now we can afford Liam Neeson and Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. Um. So so the I don't know. So the trailer goes on. There's a lot of action, a lot of like little one-liners. Chris Hemsworth is trying to be like, he's like a great agent, but he's like kind of like very laid back attitude. So it's going to be, that's going to be kind of maybe an interesting contrast to the first film where like, you know, uh, Tommy Lee Jones character, uh, you know, uh, Kay was very serious and like, you know, but he had, you know, he had that, that mentor wisdom where like, you know, he didn't, you know, Will Smith was like looking stupid where like, but he was serious about everything and his approach about stuff where this one where Chris Evans is taking a laid back approach. Apparently I'm guessing Tessa Thompson's going to be the more serious one of the duo. So you got to like a flip there in the mentor, you know, apprentice kind of thing. And uh, remember Linda Florentino. I know that name. Hold on. Let me look that up. I oh, that. you should know that name. Linda. Oh, was she like the 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 uh, the the coroner from the first film? Bam! Yeah, give that man some Italian food <laughs> because he's really Italian. I love some raviolis, cheese and meat mix. <laughs> Very well, kind of specific. Yeah. Now you didn't specify the type of meat, but you were like cheese and meat, not just one. <gasps> I like my variety in my pasta dishes. Mm, but anyway, so what song. about Miss Linda uh, Flor- uh, Fiorentino? I mean, she 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 was in the original, and then I that was the only remark you were making. <laughs> that 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 was that was the the bit. Well, it, it was more on if they're going. It looks like simply from the setup, they're going to give the female character more to do than they did in the original film, which the original is a, a very good film. Oh, yeah. But, like, Linda Florentino is just basically like, hey, I'm a coroner who kind of figured things out, and I'm running around a bunch, and they're like, hey, we're pretty much going to ignore you and just wipe your brain until the very end when we're like, oh, hey, we solved everything. Want to be an agent now? <laughs> well, she did blow up the bug. She had her moments. They blew up the bug. No, 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 they blew up the bug, and then he was still alive, and he like crawled on his hands because his like legs were blown up, and he's like, ah, and then boom, she blows him away, and she's like, okay, and what else? Uh, she finds the cat. She makes some funny quips. Okay, damn, damn, son. Remember, like, you know, you 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 are presenting a solid yeah, defense. Yeah. Plus, there was that scene where like she's coming on to Will Smith, and like during the middle of the morgue, and he's like, damn, girl. <laughs> She, she, listen. She's not. She's a supporting character at the end of the day. She's not a main character. I'm not denying true, that. True, but, true. but she had her moment. I, I felt like she had her memorable. Moments. No, I, I, I like your response there, friend. Thank I, you. I, I feel you were like Linda Torn Florentino worked the shit out of that role, and yeah. I was like, that's, that's fair, son. That's yeah. fair. 
Um, so, uh, yeah. Now, yeah, so moving forward, so I think part of the plot from what I gather from the trailer is that somebody's trying to expose the MIB. It's not Tessa Thompson. She found them, but there's some kind of, like, maybe that's what the bad guy's plan is, that they want to expose the MIB to the world. Um, and then uh, the only other thing I'll say about the trailer is, like, you, like, in Men in Black, they have their... The, you know, the black car. In the first one, they purposely made it an older style vehicle because I think that's from the comics because, you know, the whole Men in Black... The, the, the movie's based on a, a comic book series. Which is a little known fact. Yeah. Most bo- people don't realize that was one of the, like, first super successful comic book transitions. Yeah. I, I think the comic books are take a more serious route with it, with um, um, much like The Mask. The Mask with Jim Carrey, that was based on a comic book series, except the comic book was... Did not was, know that. Yes. It, no, it is... And it is way different than the comic book. The movie, the, the, the comic book, super dark and fucked up. Oh, it is, dude. Yeah, no. There's a, there's like this uh, panel in it of uh, like one of the this bad guy who like he just he can't die for whatever reason. Like it's and, and he fights the mask all the time. And the show just how just like not dead he gets. There's just like multiple panels of him taking a scalpel to his face and then dragging it down the side of his cheek, and it's just really messed up. Seriously, in the comic book, the, the mask is no different. He fucking straight up kills people. It, it is a is a horror kind of a book, just like with cartoony, you know, stuff in it. But uh, uh, Finch, you blow my mind. Yeah. Just kind of like last week, although uh, you acknowledged you were uh, not correct. Snuffleupagus is not uh, Big Bird's schizophrenic uh, creation. <laughs> Uh, it was thought it that for the first 16 years, apparently no one else uh, sees him because I guess Snuffleupagus is like uh, fucking agoraphobic or some shit. <laughs> and so like no one else sees So everyone thinks that Snuff, like that's fu- Snuffleupagus for 16 years was Big Bird's girlfriend from Canada. That, that that's what he was for sixteen years. Everyone was just like, "Oh yeah, sure, yeah, Snuffleupagus is real. Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. Uh huh, uh huh. Keep telling us about Marsha from Vancouver. Go fuck yourself, <laughs> Big Bird. Go fuck yourself. Big Bird and Snuffle- Snuffleupagus were the first uh, homosexual Muppets. Everyone, <laughs> everyone thought everybody thought it was Bert and Ernie, but they were just a distraction. They were just supposed to distract us so we wouldn't see Big Bird stroking that fucking elephant nose, that trunk. Just like, you like that, Snuffy? You like that, Snuffy? That explains why no one else met Snuffleupagus for 16 years. They were ashamed of their love, and they shouldn't have have to been. <laughs> we just... That makes too much sense. You broke me. <laughs> uh, you broke me. I am diabolically proud of that. Just... <laughs> like, I mean, it, it, wow. Yeah. Wow. Now I'm like, time out. Is that appropriate? Not, not because, like, I mean, sure, two dudes, whatever. I don't care about that. But I'm like, wait a second. A chicken and a mammoth? Is mm-hmm. that bestiality for both of them like what are the rules i feel like not just because you're an animal doesn't mean you can fuck any animal that's clearly not the case because humans are animals and i was told that i should not touch leopold the turtle that way that's something i made up that never happened it was an iguana something i also made up and i'm gonna stop continuing this lie because it's getting really weird okay so I'm I'm kind of excited for this film. Uh, you know, the cast alone makes me you know uh, hopeful. Uh, it's p- directed by F. Gary Gray, who has directed. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Gary Gray. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> now he's directed uh, "Set It Off," "The Italian Job," "The Negotiator," and "Friday," and he's also set to direct. Oh, oh my God! They're doing this. I didn't know this was a thing. No F and way. They're making a mask movie. Wait, no F. Gary whatever way. Wait, they're ma- wait, did you say they're making a mask movie? Yeah, no, not mask like the green, like we were just talking about with Jim Carrey. But like, like, mask. Oh, time out, time out, time out. Eric Stoltz and Cher? No. <laughs> no, that one. No? Wait, what, the, what is the mask is there? The 80s cartoon Mask, Mobile Armored Strike Command. Remember that 80s cartoon? where? No, I don't, and you just broke me more than you did before. It was an 80s action cartoon where, like, they're... They had masks, but they were really helmets, and each one, each had like a team of heroes, each one had a mask helmet, and each one of them gave them a different superpower, and then the villains had the same no! thing. No! And then they had cars that could... No! They had cars that could transform into, like... No! Jets and boats, and boats that could I turn into jets. I don't like it! 
You know what I'm talking about? Like mask the movie, not the mask. Mask. No, yeah, ma- like mask. That's the funny thing about that old cartoon. It's called Mask, but it's, it stands for Mobile Armored Strike Command. But command spelled with a K, like in Mortal Kombat, because they wanted mask to work. No, but you know what I mean by the the Eric Stoltz. I know, yeah, yeah, mask. Okay. He's got the elephant Titus face. Okay, right. yes, yes, cool. Got it. All right, <laughs> time to move on. It's the. Ladies and gentlemen, so we don't have another trailer coming up, but we did have the reveal in Entertainment Weekly of our first look at the cast oh. of Aladdin. Oh. Bring it over. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not watching on the live stream and you're just listening, and I don't care whichever way you watch our show, thank you for tuning in. Um, go Look it up. Look up uh, Entertainment Weekly Aladdin, and you'll see we see our Aladdin, our Jasmine, and our Genie. And, um, oh, God. I don't. I think I'm a secret asshole or something here because I saw this picture and we see Will Smith and it was announced that Will Smith was going to play the genie in here. The first time I, when I saw this picture the other day, I just laughed at he, Will Smith in this picture. He just looks so funny to me for some reason. He just, Time out. I'm going to clarify. Do you mean like good funny or do you no. mean like, oh, why did you let someone take that picture of you funny? It, it, bad. Like, oh, is that what he looks like? What, what's going on? It was so like I don't know. I think it's just like his like ha- his hair because he's got like I-, I don't know what the name of it is, but you know like where you're mostly bald up top, but you got like that hair bun up there. You know what I'm talking about? Like Will Smith and the genie in the original movie had that little bit of hair that's kind of like a mini ponytail. Um, it just looks funny on him for some reason. It just doesn't work. I don't know why, but when I saw it, and then you got the outfit, and I'm just like, he looks like he's at like a a a, a, a costume party, um, and I'm just like. I was so taken back by how funny he looks. I didn't even realize until, like, I was reading comments online. It's like, oh, wait, he's not blue. Why isn't he blue? You didn't even realize how poor uh, the choices they made for the... uh, We'll we'll get into that. We'll get into that. For Aladdin, what do you call it? The, the, like, uh, Caligria and uh, Comic Sans... uh, Oh, the fonts on it? Yes. Oh, yeah, the, the fonts on Entertainment Weekly, they're nothing. I mean, I don't know why they didn't just use the, the Aladdin logo that's that stylized look to it. Like, uh, that's just choppy and all over the place. Like, that. Like they, they took attractive Hollywood people and made them unattractive. Yeah. Uh, so, on, on, uh, so, yeah, so Will Smith. Now, he's not blue on the cover, and then Entertainment Weekly also came out with other pictures from the set um, of, uh, you know, stills from the movie of them around. And Will Smith, and a lot of people are asking Will Smith, Will Smith, why aren't you blue? And because the genie in the in the animated film was blue, and he's like, "Calm down, guys. This is the genie's human disguise. His he like like I don't know why he needs a human disguise, but when he needs to uh like I guess interact with Aladdin or be around other people, he takes on this human form. He says most of the movie he will be CGI and blue. So." That's good. I wish that we would have seen that version on Entertainment Weekly, but they gave us this thing. Well, that becomes a serious question. Like, um, we're making fun of the picture as is, but, like, serious question. How does CGI, like, transition to a glossy magazine cover? I don't know. I do. I think it probably transitions fine. I mean, how many how many magazine covers have we had for like the different Marvel movies? And it's you know, it's like they're not in complete full practical costumes. There is some CGI work in there. So, I okay, okay, uh, val, 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 Well, but the, the same time, like you said, there's some like him in blue is all CGI. Yeah, yeah. He says he'll be ninety. That not, like for most maybe they actually felt like this was less of a risk. And I know you're making fun of it for like not being blue and like him looking goofy. But like, like you said, he was like, oh, the majority of the time, I will be the thing that we don't see. Yeah. So you can't criticize that. <laughs> maybe I, like may, maybe this is actually a really bad sign or it means that they're doing a lot of post work perhaps perhaps yeah perhaps they didn't, if they if it's one of the things where they haven't got a chance to get it just right and they're still working like rendering the the, the the cgi then fine i just it just i don't know this one kind of took me no i i i get i i completely agree with your perspective uh in that like you said like it's but like again it's one of those words like well as unpleasant as this is in certain ways it might be better and promotionally superior to alternatives because as you said they don't have it where i mean remember this is a weird comparison but the original predator 
Like, they didn't settle on how the Predator looked until, like, 80% of the film. Oh, yeah, done. no, he was originally supposed to be, like, a bug alien, and it didn't yep. look great. And uh, as as he was brought up earlier in the show, Sean claude Van Damme was originally the alien. And then he stepped out because they had a version of the of the of the original alien where it was like uh it was it was all red for special effects work for they so they could do like the like the cloaking thing. And for some reason he thought that was what was gonna be used in the movie. He didn't realize that was a special effects use and he like pulled out. And all the better because because when they redid the alien with the classic movie alien design the predator and then they got um a much bigger guy into that costume because Jean Claude Van Damme Badass that he was. I, I, I know I wasn't a big Sean Clark back He's in He's tiny compared to Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Yeah. So they got a much bigger dude, and, you know, that that's the tale of how it went down. Uh, now, once again, looking at this uh, picture. Now, another thing that this, this came out like back when uh, casting was being done. Um, Naomi Scott, who a lot of people might know uh, playing uh, Kimberly the Pink Power Ranger from the uh, Power Rangers movie last year, um, she's playing Jasmine in this film, and a lot of people had issue with that because. Well, she's not Middle Eastern. She is uh, half British and half Indian. So a lot of people think that she was miscast. Um, and this is a scene that this is a subject matter that we've been talking about um, since the very first episode of this podcast about casting people and you know um, in you know uh, representing the role that they're in. In our first episode, look, we, I'm not Middle Eastern. I'm not Indian. I have. I'm pretty sure there's a decent amount of British somewhere in this DNA. I don't know. Let's take a good look at my teeth. But like my uh, problem is not with. Uh, I mean, and I, people may have an issue there, but I'm looking at this magazine cover, not the casting as an overall, but the magazine cover, and I'm like, she looks like she's CGI. Um, they definitely like. Uh... Well, like, they, no, straight up, she looks like, I'm like, what video game character is that? Oh, they, they, they glossed over her face. They do that all the time in posters. I remember one of the... Uh, I believe it, but this one looks, like, bad. Like, her eyes look like she's the next Laura Croft. I, I don't know. I, I don't think it looks that bad to me. I just think they just, like, you know, smoothed out her face like, like they do on you all know, these posters. You know what? You, I think you might be right, but I think the issue might actually be... With the matching of the blues, I th I feel like they might have done so much work with this. Uh, well, like you said, and that's something that Hollywood does, uh, that a any entertainment thing does. Like, they change colors, they add it. It's part of the job. But I think her eyes are matched up too much with blues, either in the background or in Will Smith's uh, outfit, which, like, makes it look inorganic and CGI'd. Is that, is that just me? You you don't I, see I'm, I'm not really seeing it, man. I gotta be straight. I, I mean, I, I once again, they probably like smoothed out her face with some Photoshop. They do it all the time. Um, I remember um, I've seen it on plenty of posters where, and then you like, um, which I don't get because, I mean, especially they do it a lot with women, which I don't get because like, it's, Naomi Scott is a good looking woman. I don't know why you need to smooth it. Like, it's one of those... Why? Because Hollywood is evil and Machiavellian. Oh, uh, you're, well, you're I, laughing like I just made a joke. No, no. Hollywood has its darker side. I am well aware of that. No, no, I, no, didn't, no. I didn't need... Ho Hollywood doesn't have its darker side. Hollywood is Emperor Palpatine that's really fucking entertaining. <laughs> I don't know. I thought Ian McShane was pretty entertaining. <laughs> no, not Ian McShane. What was his name? Ian... What was the guy who played the Emperor? I don't know, the guy who always played the Emperor. Like, that's the crazy thing. He played the Emperor in the fucking 70s and 80s, and then he played the Emperor, like, in the thousands. Yeah, well, no, he, he, he the first time he played the, the Emperor was in um, Return of the Jedi in... 81. Yeah. Uh, or in, 83, sorry. In, in The Empire Strikes Back, where there's that small scene where Vader's talking to the Emperor, that was actually a different actor. Oh, no shit. Yeah, and... If you can find an original copy and see that scene, you know, because now the only copies you can get where they went back over it with the with the current with the current actor, uh, the old actor, different voice, and the, the makeup job was weird. His eyes were like, uh. but anyway, so yeah, um, Latin. That's what we see Vince, so far. I love your nerdiness. <laughs> Thank like, you, man. I I I've I've, I've kind of. I've I've got a nerd boner going. Not an Ooh. actual boner, but a nerd boner. <laughs> like I'm like, damn son. Why don't you talk to me about psychology, philosophy, and like the origin of uh, I don't know the Watchmen, some shit. 
uh, Fraggle Rock. Do you know about Fraggle Rock? <laughs> yeah. Not as much. But anyway, <laughs> we got to move on to our movie reviews. But before we move on to our movie reviews, ladies and gentlemen, just to let you know, um, there's always like news going on in the film industry. Not everything we have time to go over here on the show. But I do try to post stuff to our Facebook and to our Twitter Check uh, it out. Page. Yeah, so head over. So if you're watching on the live stream, you're already on our Facebook. Go ahead, you know, after the show, scroll around. We, I uh, wasn't that much I posted this week. I apologize. But also go check out our Twitter, where I usually have some stuff over there. And then uh, just go to our Instagram, because I just mostly post funny movie memes over there. So if you're not looking for Okay, that, Vince, they get it. What movie are you going to fucking review? We're going to review fucking Mary Poppins. Bam! Yeah. No, Mary Poppins Returns, I should say. So this is a soft reboot of the, f- of the first film. Where the, the plot is, it's, uh, I don't know, we'll say, I don't want to give a real timeline, we'll say 20, 20, 25 years later. The, it's the, in a point in time in history. Yes. Uh, the, the, the two children from the first film have, where the fuck are you going? What are you doing? All right. You saw the movie. I didn't see the movie. Okay. All right. You didn't see. Uh, All right, go do your thing. You're, yeah. block, you're blocking the fucking camera. The people can't see my face. <laughs> Eric's take Eric's gotta go pee pee. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So it takes place twenty five years later. The kids from the first film have grown up now, um, and the boy has uh, three kids. His wife passed away, and life's really hard. They're gonna about to lose the house to the bank, and like he's having, and the kids are like kind of growing up too fast, and he doesn't know what to do. But the, you know, and then who comes in? Mary Poppins. And I can say it like that because that's what Lin Manuel Miranda sounds like in the movie. Uh, so yeah, no. Um, so yeah, at the end of the day, this is a soft reboot. It's in the same uh, world, and yeah, let's get into it. So, um, you know, uh, Mary Poppins in this in this version is being played by Emily Blunt, and right off the bat, I gotta say, I really enjoyed her performance in the film. Um, she was Mary Poppins, and there wasn't a point in the film where I was like, oh, she's got that charm. She's got that little bit of. Uh, uh, that uh, what, what am I looking for here? Not uh, I don't want to say spunk, but that little bit of like you know, uh, you know, she's in control of the situation. She knows what's going on. You know, she's she's doing her thing. Um, she's really charming. The sing, uh, you know, um, I don't know if it's really her singing some of the scenes. It does seem like it. Um, and if so, she's got a she's got a good voice. I you know I didn't have a problem with that. She definitely sounds better than uh, um. Uh, Excuse me, Emma Watson did in that Beauty and the Beast film where I was like, oh, that's that's not good enough for Disney. What What's going on? Uh, and, uh, yeah, she does a great job. You also got uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda. Uh, in this movie, he's playing Jack. He's kind of taking uh, Dick Van Dyke's character from the first one. He's playing not the same character, but what the, how that character fits into, like, the, the cast. He's, like, the guy on the street with the simple job, and, you know, he's, he's, he knows Mary Poppins and all that stuff. Uh uh, apparently he's like uh, one uh, some kid from the first film, all grown up. I don't know, but yeah, most people know Lin Manuel Miranda for Hamilton, the the the, the, the fucking breakout Broadway musical. Uh, he's in this film and he does a great job. He's got that accent, that British like remember like in the first Mary Poppins, Dick Van Dyke was in it, and he had that like you know the accent he did, and years later people were like you know his accent was bad. Lin Manuel Miranda kind of has a similar accent. I I don't. It's different than all the other characters in the movie. Question. How often have you actually heard a British person in real life? Um, Does watching all seasons of Doctor Who count? No. Okay. Then, um, oh, I met a British person yesterday. For real? Yeah. No, uh, I was going to a bank with my friend and the uh, person at the bank who was helping us out was uh, British. Okay, nice. Uh, so I th- I think I've got like three. I think the guy that works at the Aldi on Penn near the guardhouse. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know who I'm talking? No, I don't about. know who you're talking about. I know I know where the Aldi's is. The Aldi's. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I, there's one dude there who I'm like pretty sure is British, but I'm not a hundred percent. He could be Australian or just weird. Yeah. I mean, I've met other British people in my life. It's just like few and far between. We don't get a lot of British pe- people here in Pittsburgh. They don't. Well, they don't I got called at work by a British guy like. Either this week or last week, it was it was weird for someone to be like, "Oh, hey, cheerio, mate!" And I was like, "You're you're saying this with zero facetiousness, like this is like like this is this is straight up, <laughs> like especially when uh, it it was like ten in the morning, and I was like, "Well, you know, can I like call you back?" And he was like, "Yeah, dude, it's like five p.m. here." <laughs> like I was just like. 
Except he wasn't like, yeah, dude. He was like, well, you know, mate, like it's like 5 p.m. here, so I'm probably going to be eating tea and crumpets very right. soon. Awesome. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so yeah, Emily Blunt does a great job. Lin Manuel Miranda, uh, I he, I mean, he's he, you know he's Mr. Musical right now, so you can I don't really know how to fault him there. Once again, I think is that I mean. If, if, there's a, if there's an actual person from Britain here, please tell me, are, is that accent a thing there? Because I just don't know if he's just trying to sound like Dick Van Dyke from My the original My point film. about that story was, like, how good or bad can we know a British accent is when we don't actually really Well, the know. rest of the characters in the movie are British characters played by British people. Oh, so. they have different sounding accents. I know, I know, I know, just like here in America, like, you know, we don't sound the same way that people in, in Texas no, no, or, like, I, New York I, I, sound, but it's just... I got you. I got it's just you. Like, if there was like a few more characters, like, oh, okay, so there's some varied accents there in that particular neighborhood. But he just, his accents sound different than everybody else in the movie. So, Vincent, what would you tell people who were interested in seeing this movie well, uh, to well, they, do? Well, uh, let me go through a few more things. Okay. All the song and dance numbers were great. Honestly, they were, they were really good. I was never bored. Um, uh, there's the one scene where like they redo the whole like them being in, like in a cartoon world. Uh, it was really good. The animation was old school Disney, like I'm talking 60s. So pre 90s, like Disney animation, I like seeing that old stuff. Um, their outfits in the cartoon world had some of it was like printed, painted on, and it helped them blend into the cartoon world. Um, uh, yeah, all the characters are well. Ben Wishaw, who plays Michael Banks, and Emily Mortimer, who plays Jane Banks, they were all, all around really good performances. My, my biggest gripe with the film is it, it's just Mary Poppins again. It, it has all the same beats of the first film, it's just Mary Poppins again. So, uh, but with that said, once again, I was never bored. All the actors are great. All the song and dance numbers are great. I, uh, I go see it. Go see it. I, that's my recommendation. I gave it. A, I give it a recommendation. All right. All right. So we're gonna move on to our next film, um, which is a film that's really about uh, a man fish. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk about Aquaman. Uh, this movie stars Jason Momoa. Um, oh, Amber. <laughs> uh, Jason, Jason Samoa. No, Jason Momoa. Uh, He's a delicious Girl Scout cookie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jason Momoa, Amber Heard, and it's directed by uh, James Wan, who's mostly known for horror titles. Uh, I believe, I believe, yeah, he's a Conjuring guy, isn't he? Or what's he? I, mean, I don't fucking know. James Wan. He's, I don't know. Yeah, he's a Conjuring guy. He's a Conjuring okay. guy, and he's done some uh, the uh, done work on in the Fast and Furious. Vince Fears. has the internet. He's a wizard. Well, I knew he he done the Conjuring before, and and I think it's probably mostly for like Fast and Furious. Stop did. denying you're a wizard. <laughs> But anyway, so since the events of Justice League, Aquaman's pretty much gone back to his normal life. He's like kind of not. I he's mean, just chilling. Yeah, he's Netflix chilling. And chilling. He, he he'll he'll like save people if he needs to, but otherwise he's not looking to be a real hero. He's just like if somebody if he sees some shit going down, he's going to do something about it. But what he's, not, he's not looking for trouble like Superman or Batman would go look look for bad guys. Um, and unfortunately, things are getting bad. His uh, half brother uh, Orm. Uh, played by uh, Patrick Wilson, is in charge of Atlantis, and he's going to launch a war against the surface world because we've been polluting the hell out of the oceans. Um, Valid. Yeah, Amber Heard comes again and I say, you got to take the throne and stop this, because otherwise the whole planet is going to get engulfed in war and billions of people are going to die. And that's the basic plot of the film. It's, and uh, it's starting with Jason Moore's, uh, like what's that, his, his Aquaman, he's, he's not, the, he, he has a problem where he feels like he's not worthy to be a, a king of Atlantis because he is a half-breed. His, his mother was the queen of Atlantis, so he's got the Atlantean royalty blood in him. But his dad was just a lighthouse keeper. <laughs> his dad was just a dude that has semen in his dick. Am okay. I wrong? Am I wrong? Yeah, no, you're not wrong. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. He was a lighthouse keeper. Yeah, okay. That had semen in his dick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get what you're doing there, and stop. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um... So yeah, and I like Jason Momoa. I think he does. I mean, he's not a he doesn't have great acting skills, but he has a great on screen personality. He's fun. He's kind of he, he's got that cool vibe to him. Um, his character in the movie he can be because he's just he's just kind of bit of a brute. You know, he's just kind of like solving problems at, with his fist. Amber Heard is the more intelligent part of that of the duo in the film. She plays Mira, who is a uh, a princess from Atlantis. Um, She's definitely a more intelligent one that's more strategic. Uh, and she's powerful in her own right. Where Aquaman, he's got super strength. You know, he can, he's like basically bulletproof. He can talk to fish. He can command fish. We're going to say command because we're going to respect the Aquaman. <laughs> talk to fish. No, they make fun of it. They, they, no, they, they get Aquaman meta with that in the movie. It is a classic make fun of trope. 
Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I've actually thoroughly enjoyed. Didn't he have a cartoon in the nineties? Not that I remember. I, I remember plenty of maybe, superhero. Maybe he had like, I mean, yeah. I mean, he had those old cartoons from like the sixties and seventies where they were busting out any DC character they could get. Maybe that was in syndication in the nineties. But like, he is a go-to make fun of trope. But like, Aquaman has, has because like you said, it's like oh, talk to fish. But like, no, it's like he can be like, hey, like Ocean, you're my bitch. Yeah. Do my deeds. Right. Um. So yeah, um, so he he definitely has his fun moments because he's just kind of like a, a fun guy, and he and he definitely transferred that into Aquaman. But you you kind of see the struggle where like you know he he you know you know he he wants to be a good guy, but he's like I'm some goddamn half breed. Why do I care? Uh, you know like what 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 good can I do really? Um, uh, other things going on in the movie. Let's talk about the action. Um, the action varies a little bit in, in the scenes where it's like. Jason Momoa fighting one on one, or like a few guys where it's like uh, a smaller space, and you, uh, his fighting style is kind of like definitely trained combat, but at the same time mixed in with some like wrestler moves. So it's it's got that fun aspect to it with some fighting style. Um, but when it's like the bitter bigger battle scenes, because there's like a, there are several large battle scenes where it's like you know big expansive areas. It, it, it doesn't always work. And then the thing with this movie is it is very, very, very CGI heavy, large, expansive, uh, you know, backdrops and stuff like that. And a movie like this, I get it, the, the need for CGI in it. But sometimes, like, there's so many times where the CGI doesn't, like, work and it just takes me out of the movie. Um, Does it look better or worse than a Phantom Menace? Um, I mean, I guess better because it's been so long. But okay, um, so like it, it's better than Phantom Menace because the time, it's not CGI isn't where it needed to be. You know, okay, that, it's, that's no, it's no Avatar. It's a no great avatar. answer to that question. Yeah, legitimately. Um, and then there's a tonal problem with the film, or um, there's moments in the film where it's like badass action superhero movie, and then there's a few moments in the film where it's like this family funny. TV movie kind of thing, and even it's like the music in the background playing was just like, boop, 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 boop. you know, I'm like, what? No, no, he's got tattoos and muscles. And okay, so Vincent, as you know, I did not see this film, but I, as you may not know, I have a bet riding. I actually okay. have uh, one, maybe two, ten dollar bets riding. All right, about that the live action Sonic the Hedgehog film mm. will be better than this movie. Oh, uh. <laughs> and I am aware that this movie did really well internationally before it released oh, it, in the it U.S. Is, it is destroying in China. It's destroying in China. Yeah. Now, uh, and I, I want to be clear. I like made that post on Facebook and my immediate follow up was like, wait, is Sony doing the live action Sonic the Hedgehog film? Because I might have to rethink this bet. That was before we saw Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which, to reiterate uh, from last week's podcast, amazing. I don't care what we're talking about this week. Go see Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, I, Vince hasn't finished his review, and no, I'm going to say see Into the Spider-Verse over Aquaman because DC did not make Into the Spider-Verse. No, they did not. No, that was Sony and some help from Marvel. Uh so yeah, did we figure out how much help? Uh, no, we did not, and we don't have time to talk about it because nope. we got to get to Aquaman here. So just stay fucking on Aquaman. Um, yeah, so Aquaman's getting some mixed reviews. Um, some people are saying it's okay. Some people are saying it's good. Just as an example, on uh, on IMDb, the current rating is a seven point eight out of ten. But then, if you head over to Rotten Tomatoes, the current rating is a sixty eight percent, which is still fresh. But you know, sixty eight percent is still you know it's not you know. What's my opinion on it? Um, it has its fun moments. They're past the whole dark, gritty uh, stuff from the Snyder version. Um, but sometimes it's too light and bright and funny. And sometimes the humor doesn't work. And just like, it's like, it has that, that it, I think it's going for like 80s schlock in some scenes where it's like a cool, badass action film. And it, it's kind of goofy at the same time. So they're trying to have schlock and family friendly in the same film. Yeah, the family friendly pops up at a few. It's not dominant in the film, but when it does, it's just like. With, with, no, we're ball brawler Aquaman. What's going on? Um, so is the movie good or bad? The movie is okay to me. It's okay. And since it is okay, as is my policy on the show, I do not recommend okay movies. It is not bad. I, I'll put it this way. If you're a superhero fan, you're probably going to go see it. But if you're just 
kind of mild enjoyment, I, I do not recommend it. It, it. It's okay. It's not horrible. It, it's okay. So, yeah, I do not give Aquaman a recommendation. That go per- see Into the Spider-Verse. Yes, go see Into the Spider-Verse. Okay. Um, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for our show today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please, uh, if you do want to support the show, head over to patreon.com slash Vincent and help us out over there. But until next time, you guys take it easy. We'll see you next week.